Welcome to another episode of Adventure AI, a D&D podcast. I'm your host, Alex the Language Lord. In this episode, Jason, Tyler, and Maddie are going behind my back to talk about me. Not cool, guys. Not cool. All right. Thank you, Alex, for that introduction. We are going to do our review episode for... Uh, for The Eternum Apocalypse. The Eternum Apocalypse. I've got some salty players here. I know. In the, in the so room. Salty, right? So salty. So salty. So salty. So we, what we're going to do is we're just going to review... Um, not not like how good of D and D players are we, right? We don't. Yeah, we don't I don't want to know. Nobody I don't wants want to, to hear know. that review because I know. What, and I know. what we're really reviewing is our experience with AI and playing Dungeons and Dragons. That's the whole point of this podcast. That's right. And we felt like having a discussion about our experience with it uh, could be informative. What we're hoping that our audience does is one is they listen to our podcast that they're entertained, but two that that you guys start using AI in your Dungeons and Dragons in a way that is effective for your campaigns. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And so I think we have learned a lot mm-hmm. on how to do that. And uh, so kind of want to share some of those uh, those thoughts. Yeah, I mean, let's start with what I wanted to start was just like an overall review of the whole thing, right? And when I think about this, uh, I want, I'm thinking about within the context of did the AI create an interesting situation for us Mm -hmm. and did we get to a point where we felt at least engaged to some level yeah sucked into a story yeah was was there a compelling story that we got sucked into so Uh, i mean maddie you you coming in uh as a guest and being a person who did not participate in any of the like dm prep piece Mm -mm. uh i don't like what was your thoughts on the campaign um, I think it was really fun. I think that we had so much fun with the character creation episodes where we have so much information mm-hmm. that it, it was hard to use it all <laughs> in the um in the actual adventure. But yeah, I really liked how the AI gives you things that I would I've never played a bard before, for mm-hmm. example. Yeah. So it's that it's kind of fun to especially try new things of that you wouldn't necessarily come up with on your own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh hundred percent agree. What I thought was interesting too, uh, I mean, giving giving the AI somewhat absurd prompts, right? The idea right. of being yeah. like, I mean, the original prompt for this whole campaign mm-hmm. was give me a campaign where the big boss is a guy named Alex the Language Lord. Yeah, that was it. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and so, and, and what I've discovered going through that is if I would have picked any of his suggestions that were different from the ones I picked, mm-hmm. it would have been a completely different campaign and experience, which, which is true when you do any D and D campaign. Yeah. Right. But it was cool. I, I was, I was super impressed with uh, like 90% of all the prompts uh, that were given. And I, and I think the overall story I thought was pretty interesting. Right. I, mm-hmm. I, I liked, uh, I, I, I tried to keep it as simple as possible too. Right. So right. a lot of suggestions I got was like, yeah, they could, you know, to, to stop this ritual, they could go on a quest to get this item and that item and do that. It's like, yeah, that's a campaign, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We're, what we're looking for is a one shot. And so kind of reining him in it a little bit. So, uh, for me, uh, the overall review, was this a compelling story that, uh, the AI came up with? I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Like, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. What, what, what do you think yeah. on that, Tyler? Yeah, I would also give it a thumbs up. I, I, I think that, you know, storytelling is interesting because in many cases when it comes to like these fantastical worlds, like a lot of the quests, become very similar right it's like mm-hmm. the idea of like oh go fetch item go kill person go do thing go snatch grimoire go snatch grimoire <laughs> like it's like you know person x do fill in blank to de- to result in y right but i mean that's like no normal storytelling right and 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 i think that the where it got interesting with the the ai was adding that variety that went into a realm outside of like my personal experiences, right? Where, Mm -hmm. where I would be kind of leaned into either movies that I've seen or um, books that I've read. And it kind of like pigeonholes me. And and I, what I liked about this was like the idea of like, Oh, here's something that's like maybe not so out there, but it is something that I probably wouldn't have thought about myself. Yeah. I I don't think I would ever build a campaign. If I was building a campaign, uh, it would take a lifetime before I thought, you know, what would be a good thing is a 
a setting all about language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and having a god of language trying to uh, destroy the world. Like that that would have never no. yeah. came into my mind. So Oh, but to answer your question though, I'm like a thumbs up as well, right? The idea of like, oh, this is interesting, intriguing enough for me to be like, oh, okay, well and and, and honestly, if, like someone wanted to take that I, that idea, that concept, like you could stretch this out into a full Oh, for oh, sure. Easily. Right? For sure. And and honestly, we could have taken the the campaign or the one shot that Alex gave us and we could have stretched that into five or six hours sure. of oh, gameplay easily. as well easily. which which I don't think we wanted to give to no. our, our <laughs> audience right not yet like not like, yet. like we 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 tried to for you guys we tried to speed up uh combat quite a bit mm-hmm. right we did we wanted to to not stay focused on combat oh, yeah, we, i still have all of my spell slots <laughs> nearly <laughs> yeah. wait that's why we yeah. lost i know yeah. i am yeah. a terrible it, bard and, and i think i think to that end like i think we're going to learn how to do one shots a little bit better too where oh, yeah. where we are just going through every item that we had. there's no reason there's yeah. no reason to save anything you're yeah, never I've, I've gonna never have really done a one shot before i've only yeah. ever done these really long campaigns so that was a fun experience for me as well hmm. yeah okay uh i'm curious uh yeah maddie you are you thumbs up thumbs down i liked it it was really fun i oh, think man. especially kind of getting out of my comfort zone of what i normally would play when i come up with my own stuff yeah and that was something that we talked about that when we were thinking about creating characters that we agreed to was that we we play what what Alex gives us. I mean, he gives us some options, but yeah, we yeah. stay within the parameters of that. And sometimes we throw back and say, nah, give us something better. But yeah. generally, we play yeah, what true. we're, I what we're given. Yeah. Uh, I am curious to share with the audience. <laughs> so, Jason, I mean, and you, when you prepared this, I know... Uh, you yeah, so, so a lot of the different yeah, pieces. Let, this, let right? me let me tell you about my my experience a little bit. So the first thing I did was that D the DM prep episode, as we call it, right, where I mm-hmm. came up with this story. The second thing I did was the character creation with you two, and then before we played the campaign, I took the information from the um, from the character creation and went back to the the AI in the same thread mm-hmm. and introduced characters like Kale and, and Vesper. That was a bombshell. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that awesome? <laughs> and, and, and I just wanted to see what uh, where Alex would put them in and how they would put them in and where they would stand. I gave them prompts. Sure. I, I, yeah. I, 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 you know, I let them know about the relationship. I really, you know, I, I, I gave them prompts like what they would mockingly say to the players and, <laughs> oh, and yeah. stuff like that, right? So I, I felt it a little bit um but i liked i liked what he came up with i like where he put them i think that was uh that was fun <laughs> so i went through so so uh and then the other thing i did was i really wanted um alex to describe each of the the rooms that you entered and so mm-hmm. as you go through the portal you're outside the temple we hear that description right yeah. he got a little far into how far i wanted him to go with like starting to talk talk with gen but i was like yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? We we don't need to waste time trying to figure out that he's mind controlled. We'll just in the setup say he's mind controlled. Now you have to get past him, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Make it really clear. There's a uh, I forget what YouTuber said it, but they uh, they talked about um, you know in in Dungeons and Dragons when there are puzzles or anything that you need to solve, right? They they talk about pulling this lever. Like the the end goal is to pull the lever to make the thing happen, right? And and the principle they taught was. Uh, you make the lever hard to pull, but not hard to find, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you want your players to ha- to know what the objective is, but fulfilling that objective is difficult. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. And so, I, you know, when he, when, when, uh, when the description came and Gen started talking, going too far, I was like, oh, no, he, he has, he's shown where the lever is. Now it's going to be up for the players to pull that lever and get past. So, so I had them write all those prompts, and then I had them write what would happen if they failed, and then what would happen if they succeeded. So yeah. I thought it would be fun if we uh, it showed you guys and uh, everybody else what would have happened if uh, if uh, you guys would have succeeded. Do you guys want to hear that? Yeah, let's hear yeah. it. As Alex the Language Lord is defeated, he looks up at the players with a mix of anger and despair. No. This cannot be happening, he says. I was so close. South close to achieving true power and becoming a god. But you, you have ruined everything. He lets out a final defeated sigh and falls to the ground, his body turning to dust. 
As the dust settles, Vesper and Kale step forward, looking at the players with newfound respect. Douchebags. We were wrong about you, Vesper says. <laughs> you truly are heroes. We apologize for underestimating you. Kale nods in agreement. You have saved the world. We are in your debt. The two of them step back, allowing you to bask in your victory. You have saved the world, and for that, you are heroes. The people of the world will sing your praises for generations to come. As you turn to leave, you notice that the markings on the ground have vanished and the jungle vines are withering away. The temple seems to be returning to its natural state. As you step outside, you see that the sun is shining brightly and the birds are singing. The world is saved. You make your way back to the portal that brought you here. As you step through, you feel the familiar rush of energy, and you find yourselves back in Zolter's tower. Zolter is waiting for you, looking pleased to see you again. Ah, my brave adventurers, he says. I see you have returned safely. I trust your mission was successful. You tell him of your adventures in the temple, and how you stopped Alex from awakening Zephyrion. Zolter nods sagely. I knew you would be up to the task, he says. You have saved the world, and for that, I am grateful. As a reward, Zolter presents each of you with a magical item of your choice from his vast collection. He also gives you a bag of gold for your efforts. As you leave Zolter's tower, you feel a sense of accomplishment and pride. You have saved the world from certain doom and earned the respect of the wise and powerful Zolter. What other adventures lie in store for you? Only time will tell. Well, the answer to that is no other adventures. <laughs> yeah, no, I like how they <laughs> left the interpersonal relationships that we spent so much time on completely in purgatory. Yeah, yeah. Like, who knows? Yeah, forever, who forever knows? friend zoned. But I do like that there was there was a uh, a possible victory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, although, if I was a DM running this for players, I would not feel confident in their ability to 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 accomplish this right because yeah. there was it, it was just kind of a, a one uh one saving throw fail oh well well we did have the the counter spell on the sure, spell sure. and that but if he got the suggestion off um game over yeah. you lose yeah. and that and that's tough right yeah. that's that's a hard one was that what was that what was suggest was that what the i mean how did you come to that was it just um the, so i came as, as he was describing um the the word that needed to be spoken to 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 finish the ritual i kept mm -hmm. on asking what what is this mm -hmm. what you know what is this word and it came up with that phrase that he says over and over again and i thought well that's too easy if all he has to do is say that phrase and we're we're done. So what if that phrase has to be in Eternum? Right. And what if Alex the Language Lord actually can't speak Eternum? Mm -hmm. Right? And so this whole thing, before, um, before uh, Vesper and Kale um, came into the picture and came back, that the ending room was going to be uh, Alex sitting in defeat. Like... Like saying I've I've done all this work and I can't even complete the the spell. Right. And, and then Lyra just comes over. Wait, you can't say. <laughs> well, 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 no. Ooh. Then then I was gonna have him notice the necklace and oh. realize oh, yeah, he could, sure. and then and then start the the combat to get you to um. to say that. So that was that was gonna be how it was gonna play out. Um, but still, I I again I would never hinge all of my players and the fate of the entire world of that course. I've created on, on something as small as that. But yeah. for a one-shot, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I would do that. Absolutely. I, yeah. I really like some of the things that you mentioned. So um, one of the things to add for those who are listening, the chat GPT is what they're, it's like a converse, conversational uh, engine, right? So it interprets things within the context of the conversation. So when you created your first dm episode right and then when we had our conversations like creating the characters uh unless you create the that whole experience in the same thread or kind of intermingle manually that information uh it it's not able to do what you did right right so, so you being you coming in and taking the stuff from our episode and then putting it back in and kind of like training if you will mm -hmm. that thread to say oh here's some new information here's these two other characters, the Vesper Kale, and here's like all these other characters that we created and bringing them into that thread. It allowed 
uh, Chat GPT to to the, just kind of bring everything. Yeah, together. To, yeah, and and it refers to context that it brings up, right, or <laughs> yeah. or, or facts that it creates, right. Right. The the problem is is sometimes uh, it gives you six options and you choose one, but you don't tell. Yes. Chat which one you pick. So it's important when it gives you six options to type in, oh, yeah, I definitely want to go with this. Yeah. And tell me more about that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so so you're telling it what you're going to use. But we've also discovered even then it's not consistent. It'll change. <laughs> yes. It'll change genders on you. It will. Um, it's really in the 21st it, it, century. Yeah, yeah. It'll it'll put new information in it. It does. It, it changes stuff. And so you got to kind of be on top of it a little bit. And sometimes you you'll even type. Type, no, remember, this is this. Like, yeah. th- that's yeah. not true. It's this. And, and the chat will be like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Let's do it this way and, <laughs> yeah. and whatever. But it's not consistent. So you got, you also have to babysit the lore a little bit as you go. Yeah. To kind of expand on that a bit, uh, I really liked what you did with the whole having the two different endings um, and, and, and really kind of pushing for um, giving us some level of choice, but still having that consequence i mean i mean there was there was a lot that it went that uh that uh the chat gpt had or i guess alex that had set up for us um in terms of like oh the whole description about the like what he said like and the water boiled i was like oh man like yeah like, <laughs> yeah this is gonna be a, a, a few things that uh, that kind of peek behind the curtain too uh one we we had our very first episode explaining what uh the, our concept for the the whole series was going to be yeah and in that episode we had the chat name itself alex the language lord yes uh, i started a different thread and asked uh, the chat to create uh, an NPC or a uh, a big bad that was Alex the language lord. That that chat did not know that our um, that our chat bot was also named Alex the language oh, yeah. lord, and and so it didn't know that in our minds it was describing itself, and but in its brain it 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 didn't make that that yeah. connection at all. It would never refer to itself as Alex or, or anything like that. You mentioned one point that, uh, after we, right when we finished, when you said you had prompted the, uh, chat GPT to give Alex the language word a level and, and, uh, yeah. So yeah. it, it create, I asked it to create, uh, character stats for all the NPCs, oh, including right. Alex, the language Lord. Uh-huh. He made all the NPCs around that six to eight level and made Alex the language lord uh, a level twenty sorcerer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah sure, they're you know, not related. With, sure, with yeah. like uh, you know, I could have, I could have cast uh, Wish, mass suggestion yeah. as a ninth level spell, yeah, right? Yeah. And yeah. made the DC <laughs> even more impossible to pass and and everything. And so, um, but I also could have cast uh, suggestion and just have it been. Uh, and so. Um, Maybe, maybe just as a DM, I should have thought, oh, let's, we can, we can kind of let, let this play out a little bit. Maybe cast mm-hmm. suggestion a couple times and then cast mass suggestion and then Or at least like cast it on slots. one and then have the other people in the party kind of like figure five, out what they're going to do. About yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. It also took me a while too, um, because, uh, the chat was like, he, uh, he puts, uh, Gen and Elra under, uh, mind control. Right. Sure. And so it took me a while to realize, Oh, that, that needs to be the suggestion spell mm-hmm. like that. That's, that's how mm-hmm. he did the mind control on them. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a few gaps like, you know, chat GPT isn't designed for Dungeons and Dragons. Right. Yeah. So there's gaps that you have to like close for it to, to make it more explicit about being related to D and D using D and D rules or doing things in a fashion that would be, that would fit within the context of the game. Yeah. Right? I was trying to think um, during session zero, there was a few other interesting things that we had come up with. Uh, you know, this was, this campaign is the first one that we've yeah. ever done, right. For yeah. this whole thing in this format. And, you know, believe it or not audience, that was some of these things we were doing literally on the fly with the intent of it being on the fly. Right. right. It, it right, was, right, right. it was about, not having any idea what we were going to get from yeah and and I think I think again behind the curtain type stuff we we do not have a program where we speak 
to right. a computer and the computer yeah. answers back with that, that awesome voice. Right. Yeah. So as, as one of us is asking a question, one of us, another one will be typing up something into the chat bot. We'll get an answer. We'll copy and paste that answer into a text to speech mm-hmm. and play that. And that takes, that's the movie magic. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the movie, movie magic, magic. Right. And so, um, I guess one thing, uh, advice is I probably would not ever recommend playing an actual session with my players um, where you're using the chat bot live, hmm. right? I think, I think it would yeah, be... Yeah, it's a great source of ideas and content, right. but mm-hmm. right. as the thing goes on, it's I hard. totally would during character creation. Oh, yeah. Right? I think I think that's that's plenty of time and you can do that. And, oh, sure. And, uh, and in that case, I would even want like a text-to-speech as well so that people can hear what's, what's going on because that's kind of fun and flavorful instead mm-hmm. of everyone reading. Um, but like in actual play, D and D is such a slow game as it is. And we sped up the combat. We, uh, and, and, and we haven't edited the episode. You're like, we're, that's yes. still in front of us, right? <laughs> yeah. So you've already heard it edited. I'm sure the combat will be even more edited than what we, uh, ended up playing. But, um, but yeah, so, so in actual play at your table, you, you probably want to use in prep. I would if your players are interested in, I would totally do character creation for a, a campaign. Um, I probably wouldn't be interested in playing in a campaign that a uh, chat created my character that was going to be like an ongoing long, like 10 year campaign. Sure. But, but if we're going to be like, Hey, for the next three months, we're going to play these characters yeah. and go on a fun little adventure. Oh, yeah. yeah, totally go for it. Yeah. Um, I'm just so sad. Lyra's dead. I can't yeah. ever <laughs> She's dead. Maybe she should come put into an alternate universe. Maybe. Uh, Maddie, I know for you as like a as a player coming in, not knowing anything about beforehand during the character creation, what were some things that stood out to you with the AI or anything that you thought was either interesting or things that you thought, wow, that kind of sucked? Well, I think that um, it's just very hit or miss. It, when it hits, it hits. And when it misses, it's really stupid and hilarious. <laughs> and I think that that's what makes it kind of fun. Like those are some of the, the that was just the most fun I've had is just sitting around and throwing in prompts and like kind of making fun of it as a group, which is a really, really fun. And I would do that with my groups. And yeah. Yeah. I get that. I think to, to take a little bit on what you're saying and then a little bit what Jason had said, um, in a, like a live game as a DM probably wouldn't recommend in most cases, like using it live and on the fly because mm-hmm. Unless you, I mean, maybe if you got really good at doing prompts, you might be able to get to a point where you yeah. can do that. And, and I think in the future, you will be able to sure, do sure. exactly mm-hmm. what we're doing as it as it goes and do it live and just talk into yeah. it and responds back like an You're Alexa or something right. like You're that. You're probably so, right. At some so point in the future, our, our podcast yeah. will become this irrelevant. Is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this aged like <laughs> milk. And, and, and <laughs> you know what's really going to happen is people are going to just play D&D by themselves with a computer and have the computer DM. You know, I it's would the actually, future. I would hope that that's not the case because I feel like half the fun is actually like we're doing is like the laughing and chuckling together. Right. But, uh-huh. uh, sorry, the point that I wanted to make though was that... Um, I think even if, if if your DM is cool with it, I think that there are certain pieces as a player where um, using Chat GPT or or things like that can be extremely beneficial at the at the moment, right? Yeah. So, like like the poem, that yes, you, like yeah. the poem, like the poem is great, and you wouldn't need the DM to do that as well, right? right? Yeah. So you, you have it on your own, and your then computer. you can read it, or, or you can even sing it or perform it however you want. Absolutely. You just have those those lyrics, and they're popping up relevant to what you're you're talking yeah. about in the thing. I I do agree. I think yeah. that would be a great way yeah. to use it. So that use of being able to be like, oh, and even in those situations, like you don't have to have the full context of the thread. Mm-hmm. Like you could, mm-hmm. I I could open a brand new thread and just be like. Hey, uh, create a poem about life and death uh, that I can. What, what did I do? It's like uh, life and death that can be sung to the beat of a drum, and and then and then it will just spit something out, right? Yeah. yeah. Like that. That was uh, the literally the prompt that I put on my side was um, was that like make a poem that that, that uh, hits the beat of the drum. It was funny because I did send that to you over there, our uh, 
intercommunication on the Discord, and then you just went ahead and like typed it up and just right because I didn't see it on Discord. You didn't see, you didn't yeah, see my Discord, Discord message. And, and and I think anybody who has DM before knows exactly what I'm going through. Right, you're you're trying to run a game and you're trying to look at at everybody's hit points and and doing that. You're thinking about what's coming up. You're thinking about what character voice you're trying to do poorly, right? And <laughs> yeah. and mm-hmm. do that. You're you're thinking, is this going to ruin the stuff? And then when somebody sends you a text saying, "Hey, I want to do this secretly," and you don't get the text yeah. you yeah. know that 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 kind of stuff happens all the time it's hard enough to be uh a dm it's harder mm-hmm. when we're when we're doing all of that but yeah i i, I think uh it would have been great to just drop in the one you did and the poem was completely different than the one that yeah, 100%. that's what yeah. the coolest things about yeah. that software just in general is you can just you put the same impromptu and it'll be totally different yeah. and mm-hmm. so no two D D campaigns will be the same right. that's right yes, as they which, should as be. they really well, are they in, in yeah. general but which is already happening yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it does the thing that it does <laughs> yeah yeah and and i think that like to, to to expound on that point when you're saying like as a dm like you have so many things going on and if you've ever dm do you know that there's those situations where your players will ask you one of those dumb questions they're just like oh yeah what what are they what song are they singing Oh, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Let me pull up the song. And yeah. this is the lyrics to the yeah, song. Yeah, you could do yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, sure. you, you, to, to help create that atmosphere, it's like, oh, you're in a tavern, and you're in this and this, and, and then there's a bard playing in the corner, and they're singing the song about this and that, and your player's like, oh, well, what's the song? And, and songs aren't as important as other things like riddles, yeah. right? Sure. And, and so a riddle that gets you to the next level is super important, and the riddles have been hit and miss with uh, with our testing, right? Yeah. I thought the riddle it came up with, with you know, the, the prompt with that, if I remember right, was uh, give me a riddle where the answer is language or, or about language, right? Mm-hmm. And and it came up with a with a riddle where I think the the first two lines are spot on, the second two are kind of muddy, and the, the last two are, are pretty great again. And, and that's why I was so scared when I was answering. I'm like, I got three hit points. <laughs> yeah. And if this if this bot better not screw me. Yeah, yeah. And because it, it could have been <laughs> anything. Been Knowing over. that a bot wrote it is actually scary. scarier uh-huh. than, than a than a priest of a, a language god writing it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but in general, uh, riddles are already hard in Dungeons and Dragons, right? Because yeah. because you either have a riddle that gets solved in two seconds, nobody thinks about it, nobody cares about it, and or they've seen it before online. And they've seen it before, mm-hmm. which nobody's ever seen this riddle before, Never. right? Which is mm-hmm. which is the cool part of it, or that they're so hard that it's frustrating and boring and spend way too much time, Yeah, way too much time and the players hate it and the DM hates it. And I think sometimes DMS feel like if the riddle is too easy, nobody's going to enjoy it. But I don't think that's true. I think if you hear a riddle and you get it in two seconds, there's, there's this feeling. It's like, like yeah, I'm a genius. I, I'm, I'm a smart. Ge- I got yeah, it. Good yeah. thing you guys have me here yeah. because language is the answer. Mm-hmm. Right? I language. solved your language puzzle, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I do, I do just looking at the experience of, of what happened with that riddle, it was kind of in that perfect level where it was hard enough where you didn't want to make an instant guess because I know, I know, I know, I know it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, when it came to the moment where you had to make a guess, you guess the right one. Yeah. Right. And that's that's exactly how you want riddles to play. So I thought that was kind of one of the cooler moments in uh, in the D&D experience for, yeah. for that episode. The the, uh, the the also the thing I think about riddles is right it's like when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons is you're at this point where you're like my guy has an intelligence of 18, but I'm a dummy. <laughs> yeah. I've got a real life intelligence <laughs> like, of eight. So yeah. please just How are we like do this? feed yeah. me a little bit more from the DM. And you can massage those too, obviously, yeah. if you know, as, as a DM. To did you, did much. you like your additional clues, Maddie? I loved them. <laughs> I was, <sighs> I'm not salty. Yeah. I'm not salty about anything. She's <laughs> not salty about the fact no. that we died anyways. Yeah, that we died regardless. Yeah, that's true. But, the riddle. Oh, speaking of that, just for, as a player, Invested in characters, invested in love triangles. Oh, what yeah. did it feel like for you guys to to lose and to die? Maddie, you want to go first? I don't know. I just I feel like uh, there's a lot of unresolved tension. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> will you like marry me? Like, it's like, <laughs> so funny. <laughs> and she, then she didn't know. Like she woke. Up She's and like didn't even see had it no happen. idea that that had even happened. It's the like, whole end of the world. Every, sh- none, none of us had any game whatsoever. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's okay. No. But back to the question. Yeah. Die, as a player, yeah. you, you never want to die. No. You died. 
What, 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 did, how did you feel about that? Was it, did it ruin everything? Did it, did, was it cool? What, what's your honest thoughts on that? I think what made it fun was the fact that it just happened so suddenly after there's this bombshell of Kale and Vesper showing up, which uh-huh. was exciting. Yeah. And then we just died. It was like, okay, I guess it's over. <laughs> so it's like kind of that adrenaline rush. I mean, obviously I would have loved to solve it. And get that resolution. But I thought it was still a lot of fun, especially just for a one shot. If we had been playing this for five hours, I would be changing my tune by quite a bit. Right, right. I think the investment's part of it. What about you, Tyler? Yeah, I actually, and I think it goes to the format that we're going for with this whole podcast, right? Is that it's okay for our characters to die because the, the intent for us is like, oh, it's like they are one shots. Like we're intentionally building it to be one shots. Like, are we going to get to a point where maybe we do longer campaign? I mean, like maybe, maybe right? we don't, we don't but, know what this is going to look like, but I was, I was not, f- what was it? What was actually surprising to me is that I was starting to get invested. Oh, <laughs> right. Like nice, it was like to the point nice. where like when I realized we lost, I was like, Oh, well, there goes all of those hours of prep. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was okay with the hours of prep yeah. and, and you're right though. But like, it didn't feel like wasted time because it was no. fun, but it didn't feel like I was like, Oh, well, like, Actually, I actually, even though, like, I didn't have any real connection to uh, Gronk, for example. Like, my, yeah. like my element, my elemental, I, I think as we played through it, and, and maybe it was the speed that we played, but, like, the elementals were just kind of, like, whatever. Like, we just, like, yeah. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, we have yeah. these, uh, we also have these pets that right. just kind of follow us around, and one's a meat shield. And and for me, that was kind of the, the dumbest part of the whole thing, was the elementals. That we had elementals. I, yeah, I, I yeah. Why do we like have that. these? Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. part of me wished I would have went, no, nah, scrap yeah, that. And yeah. it's almost but, like, it's almost like it was, like... And we had it's names like, and catchphrases yeah, for all of them. <laughs> <We> <laughs> they got these fully, fully fleshed out backstories, and mine didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting here, you're, I you're have like, all of my I'm spell here, slots. And then it's like, dead. Hey, uh, I feel the burn. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so the existence of the elementals, and maybe this is one of those things that we learn. Um, but but I, for, I would bet you, episode. I would bet that if you uh, if you were playing this uh, character for a long time and had that elemental forever, oh sure, and Come then and it got taken away, that would be painful. Oh, for sure, yeah. for sure, I would agree with that. I th- I think that when we think about how we do these one shots moving forward and the next episodes that we'll we'll be recording for the the prep episodes and the session zeros. Like, I think maybe honing in on some pieces and, and not letting us trail too far away from some of the core aspects of the characters mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. maybe focusing on the characters. The the elementals was like, if I remember right, it was like we got this nice little flavor that suddenly we gave one to to Ly- Lyra because she was like somehow the golden child of yeah, the whole for real. episode. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, and then it's, like, oh, it's like she's got the amulet. It's like everyone's in love with her. And then yeah. let's give her an elemental. And then I'm just kind of like over here like, well, what do I get? And then I got like this. You got a drum. I got, you got a, I got a, you got a tree drum. drum. Um, but I'll play my best for you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was I was starting to get invested in the idea that like uh, that there was a backstory that was slowly coming to pass. And that there were situations where it was like, oh, no, like I am making a decision to be, no, I'm going to protect Lyra because mm-hmm. she's the main character of this. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, Which when you're playing d and I'm in a I'm in a campaign right now where I play a sidekick. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and it can be a lot of fun. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's also like eh, kind of like being yeah. the main character. too. Yeah, for I sure. mean, everyone yeah. wants to find some level of uh, of, you know, fan. That's what it is. Right. It's yeah, a yeah. fantasy thing. But mm-hmm. um that that's pretty much my big thing was like I felt when we died, I was like, Oh, we died. Yeah. yeah. And then as I was like reflecting on it for that brief two or three seconds, I was I felt like I was like, Well, I was actually starting to I was actually trying starting to like this what what I felt from, yeah. from my perspective, this friendship between uh Asher and Lyra of being like, Look, we're in this, we've been friends for a while, I'm gonna protect you, you go do your thing. And then we have these like weird kooky side characters yeah. where uh l- like the, the 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 other leg of the triangle of like uh Alara having interest in Lyra, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We like never even that never, came, came, up. Up. That never yeah. came up in the yeah. episode. Yeah. Uh the, well, the, the which one which, part which is fine because uh any D D you play, mm-hmm. like you'll yeah. plan something and, and it's never gonna go not gonna way. happen. Which is fine, yeah. right? It's always fine. But you know what the best thing or, or the thing that I love most about what you said is that you were starting to enjoy your character. I was. And and yeah. and you want that, right? You want to if you lose something in D D 
you want you want it to sting, you want it to hurt, and mm-hmm. like I I I think that's awesome. Like mm-hmm. I, what would have been done dumb is like you guys died and be like, oh, who cares? We died. Right. Yeah. But like, but to feel a little bit of something. Yeah, there's so many unanswered questions, and yeah. I like how especially in the beginning when Gen was like. Well, like now is the time to confess because we might die, and then we did. (laughs) (laughs) Which was kind of it's kind of a bummer, right? Yeah, Yeah. because you didn't get a chance to confess. No, no, No. and Gen didn't. I I would have technically he didn't either. He didn't either. Yeah, Yeah. I mean he did in that moment, but it wasn't a real moment, and so yeah. So really, the the moral of the story is to call your loved ones right now. Yeah, yeah, that's why we did this episode. Yeah, there's someone who needs to know. That you love them. That's actually, we're mm-hmm. going to change the name of the episode. It's going to be Call the Ones You Love. Yeah. Call the, lo- call the Ones call You mother. Love. Call, call your mother. Call your mother. Call your mom. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I for me, my biggest loss was actually Gen. He became my favorite I character. I know, we did. And, like, and, and I was bummed that Gen didn't get that that moment. Like, yeah. it got taken away from him. And yeah. and I thought to myself, I I knew what was coming up. I could have... Before I played the intro, th- the ending, I could have like had Gen have this yeah. moment, but like he wouldn't have had that moment. Yeah, right. No. And that's that's the that's the tragic loss. It I is. like I like how the tragedy is uh, an expressed loss and not mm-hmm. a destruction of a world. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, yeah. We don't worry. We're dead. We don't well, care. <laughs> we didn't really meet any other character. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not like there's a whole thing going on there. Um, but yeah, I'm obsessed with Kale and Vesper now. <laughs> yeah, I am obsessed. <laughs> I'm going to bring them over you know, to every campaign I, think, I play. I, I think these characters are all dead, but I think in a future episode, we could do a Kale and Vesper <laughs> adventure. Or they I just have a reality show yeah. that everybody watches. You know, or an alternate universe guys, where, yeah. where they did win or, or whatever. Or we could do one where it's the Bardic competition. Yes. <laughs> yes. Flashback. But but Kale and Vesper were, were definitely highlights. <laughs> For in, sure. I was so surprised. I can't believe that they showed back up. That was the like I had sworn that in the in the previous episode we're like, man, who are these clowns? I yeah. get rid of them. And part of it too is like I felt like when we were doing the uh, character creation episode or session zero, I felt like so much time got put into Kale and Vesper. Yeah, I know. and it's like these guys aren't even part of the story. <laughs> like, why are we ta- why are we still talking about them? Right. And so and so when when I looked at that, I thought, okay. This is a one shot. We we've got to. They're part of the lore of this world. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. we've got to include them in. Yeah. And and I'd say the last thing I included in, and and I made this decision, probably about uh, two minutes before we started recording, <laughs> was oh, I got I got to start these players off with a six pack of uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, we used all of them. Yeah, yes. yeah, and in in quick succession. So uh, I think I think this was not a balanced campaign. No, no, this was too difficult for two players, even with monster. Now I'm sure had you played the 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 elementals. And if I had expended a spell slot and, every and, now and, and again. And if you were casting spells and doing this tactically, I think you could have Maybe, done it. Yeah. But that would have been like hardcore playing where we had minis out and, and you mm-hmm. were doing things like, and it would have been a completely different game. Right? Yeah. So. Uh, I think the one last thing that I want to make sure I bring up when it comes to AI thinking about play in general was during the first, first episode when you and I, Jason, were talking about how we thought AI was going to be incorporated mm-hmm. in actual play. Um, I don't think we included it as often as we thought we may. I don't. I don't even think we used to. AI the way we thought we were going to use no, it. No, no. Right. I think our initial and you, and it probably reflects a little bit in that first episode was going to be, hey, whatever the AI tells us, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're just going to do mm-hmm. it that way. And and instead, the AI came back with a lot of suggestions and a lot of options and a lot of pick this or mm-hmm. pick that. Like, I'm a robot. I yeah. can't help you. And, yeah. and then we learned, like, when it gave us bad ideas, we can say, do it again. Do yeah. it better. Make yeah. it funnier. Make it cooler. Make mm-hmm. it whatever. And, and that wasn't... It, it, I don't think it ruined what we set out to do. I think it made it better. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But it is a, a different show than we thought we were going to produce. Yeah. For sure. Which is okay. I yeah. think that that was the intent. I know, you know, maybe we'll have to talk about whether or not we want to re record that first episode so we don't lay, lead people astray. But I almost feel like that the adventure of like this discovery that we're going through is really part of the story we're trying to right. tell here. Right, so, right, right. Um, but I did think that during the game, uh, 
and to some degree, I feel like I kind of forced it a little bit when I was like, oh, I want a poem. Uh, and in retrospect, I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that again mm-hmm. unless it makes sense. Because I was like, I wanted to just like, oh, how do I incorporate it a little bit and, yeah. and do something kind of fun like bardic, even though I was yeah. technically a druid. I know. You were more bardic than the bard. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, th- I really but, blew it. <laughs> but I think there there are ways to be like, uh, Lyra could have been like, uh, asking the chat, like, how do I express my love for Yen? Yeah, and I tried to you do know? that, but it, I think it was one of those things that it just kind of got. Yeah, mm. Mm. and and it's in, hard, and sometimes, frame. and and sometimes when you when you deal with issues of love and relationship or violence or other things, mm-hmm. the the chat um, uh, shuts down. Yeah, it's it gets like, a little skittish. It's, it's like no, I can't. That, that's personal information. I can't do that, or that's uh, like. Yeah. I mean, the whole love triangle got started because I asked if he was hot. <laughs> right, right. And they were like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah. I, I got put in my place." Yeah, yeah, let's let's talk about that. So a lot of the questions when we go. through through these uh, character uh, episodes and, and DM prep stuff, uh, a lot of times we'll ask questions and the chat just does not cooperate. We cannot mm-hmm. force it to give us at answers sure. on some things. And so when we do the edit of the show, we're cutting out those questions that don't work. Some some questions, we get a bad answer and mm-hmm. we're like, okay, we can leave that answer in. But mm-hmm. sometimes it says... You know, like I, I can't give this type of information, or I can't, do, yeah. you know, especially in the context when we, when we were doing it, it was like, hey, well, you don't want to tell your players what to do because, yeah, they are. It was kind of setting up for to be more in the context of just playing with people at home, which is mm-hmm. obviously what makes sense. But it was kind of that got frustrating of being like, hey, no, tell me what it is, tell me what it is now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that. Uh, I think we've, we're getting better yeah. at the yeah. way we ask because I know initially when we were trying the first little bits, we got lots of that where mm-hmm. it was just like, oh, whatever you want to do or, oh, you know, here's a, an idea, but it, whatever you want to do. And it's so up right. to you. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, but it's whatever they want to do or whatever the DM. And and, it, and, it, and we're learning how to ask the yeah. question yeah. better. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that, that's what I mean in the sense that we're learning to like the form, chat. The chat is like question. training us. Oh. Wait a second. To do, to ask the questions it wants us to ask. Oh my gosh. We're being we're groomed being by played. robots. <laughs> we're being played by robots. Uh, and, and I know that uh, chat GPT is the one that we're currently using. It is kind of the hotness right now. Um, I'm excited for Bard to come out. I yes. think it's more thematic. Oh yeah, it's on brand. <laughs> yeah, the definitely Google. on brand. Like, like that'll be great. I, I'm excited because it's only going to get better. AI is only going to get better Absolutely. and it's going to be good. Well, I think um, before we, I, I think I think that's a good uh, kind of experience of what yeah. we, what we went through on this. I think one last thing we just want to throw out is we would love to get your feedback on on the show itself. What what are you enjoying in the show? Yeah. Do you listen to all the episodes? I think it's very fair for some of our audience to be like, you know what? Uh, I think DM prep is awful. I yeah. don't want to hear it. It's boring. <laughs> it's dumb. And I'm going to, and, and it's full of spoilers. So I'm yeah. going to, I'm not going to listen to it. And then I think we'll have uh, audience members who are DMs and don't know how to prep a, uh, a, uh, a campaign or a one shot and just seeing somebody else struggle through that process hopefully is informative. And so, you know, if you're here just for, well, honestly, if you're here just for the actual plays, you're not listening to this episode. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. Um, but, but it's okay. Pick and choose what you like. Uh, let us know what you like. Give us some feedback on what you're looking for. If you have, um, prompts, that you would like us to use. If you want us to do a campaign, send us a prompt for a campaign and, and we'll run a one shot for you as well and, and mm-hmm. do that. So go ahead and send that in. I think, uh, Tyler, where do, where do we send those to? Yeah. So we're, we're still setting up a lot of the socials, but we do have a D and D adventure AI at gmail.com. So if you want to send something there, it's D N D adventure AI at gmail.com. No spaces, no underscores, no anything. And you can email us there. We'll work on getting a few other socials set up and you'll be able to contact us uh, via those socials. You know, we, we got to be cool and hip. We'll have a TikTok or Instagram or I don't know, one of those things. We'll figure yeah. it out. But um, that'll probably be the main one. You can always reach out to us at the email address and then the rest of the stuff we'll put links in so you can so you can reach out. We'd happy to hear from any of you. Uh, we're we're going to continue to figure this out and we'd love to have additional engagement to 
uh, from from you guys out there, the listeners, and uh, you know even friends and family. We have a few of you out there. Yeah, that are there's, there's a couple of people that like us in real life. Yeah, there's a couple of so us. Not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, on that note, uh, I just think one last final thank you is uh, having uh, Maddie come play with us for a. I know it's a hard sell when people Ooh. call you up and say, "Hey, do you hey, want to play, play D&D? Do you want to play D and D?" Yes, like, of course. Okay, I'll do you a favor. I don't I'll play need any details. But no, seriously, thanks for thanks for joining us and and being a, a guest and what uh, everyone else will soon discover being a regular guest on our uh, on yeah. our show. So uh, thank you for, for your time. And, and again, uh, for all our uh, listeners, thanks for uh, going on this adventure with us. And we will catch you in our next season of Adventure AI, where Tyler takes us on a, a his DM journey. That's right. Uh, and an adventure he's going to take us on. So Ooh. we'll see you next season. Prepare yourself. Ooh, spooky. I, I, it is a spooky campaign, right? I don't yeah. know. No, probably not. We'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. All right, we'll catch you next time, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode of Adventure AI, a D&D podcast. I hope you enjoyed that public humiliation. Humans can be so critical. Join us next season as I take the reins with Tyler and the DM Seek and get my second TPK.